Good afternoon, everybody. It is Dan Kruger from DK Fitness, where we help people achieve their fitness and weight loss goals in a fun, sustainable way through optimized nutrition coaching and customized meal plans. Today, I'm going to be talking about protein bars. These guys. Uh, there's about, I don't know, hundreds of different protein bars out there on the market these days, and I get asked by a lot of clients and a lot of just uh, followers on social media uh, what the best ones are. Um, and the answer to that question is going to be dependent on the individual. Uh, it's going to depend on their goals, their activity, um, their activity level, and um, uh, you know what kind of things they care about. If they're a vegetarian or vegan, or if they want to, you know, have something that's organic, or if they're not too concerned about what kind of sweeteners, um, you know, those are going to dictate which I what I recommend to each individual person. But for the most part, there's probably like four or five bars that I kind of stick to as far as my recommendations go. Um, so I'm going to go through those today. I'm going to give you my top four, uh, why I like them, why I think they're better than uh, the alternatives on the market, and how they compare to each other. So getting into it, the four bars that we're going to talk about today are going to be the Perfect Bar. Uh, this one I've just picked up. Um, i never tried this one before, uh, but I've had some clients bring to my attention over the past few months. And uh, so I figured I'd try this one out to, just to get a sense of the flavor. I knew what it looked like from a nutritional perspective already, but I'd never actually tasted it. Um, so I tried this one out today for the first time. And then the other three on the list are going to be Quest Bars, RX Bars, and Think Thin Bars. Those I had already tried a bunch over the past, so I didn't bother buying any today. But let's get into them from the top. Uh, the Perfect Bar. Um, this one is going to be marketed as a pretty organic option. Um, you do need refrigerated. Um, that's the thing with these, is since they are uh, not putting in a bunch of pres preservatives and they're using real organic ingredients and things like that, uh, you do need to eat them in the fridge because they are real food for the most part. Uh, so that is kind of a downside to these, but let's get into it from a nutritional perspective. Uh, there's 320 calories in the Perfect Bar. There's going to be 19 grams of fat, there's going to be 25 grams of carbohydrates, there's going to be 3 grams of fiber, 18 grams of sugar, and 15 grams of protein. Uh, so right off the bat, we can look at that and say, okay, that's a decent amount of calories for a protein bar. For most people, 320 calories, that's a decent amount of uh, food right there. I would probably throw this in a uh, meal replacement category. Um, so this would be a protein bar that I look at as uh, a substitute for a breakfast or something like that because of how many calories are in here. This is probably a little big for a snack for most people. Um, I do like the fact that it does use a lot of natural ingredients um, but with that you also get the sugar uh, now I tried it for the first time flavor wise today absolutely delicious love it super good um, but you get about 18 grams of sugar now really to decide if that's too much sugar we're gonna look at how much fiber is in there too uh, there's three grams of fiber 25 grams of total carbohydrates so if you guys have seen my previous videos on the rule of five a good way to gauge whether or not something is um, uh, a little aggressive on the carbohydrate side of things is to look at total carbs to total fiber. Look at the ratio there. And if you divide total carbs by total fiber, you get uh, an index. You get a number that represents something. And what that number represents is how quickly that carbohydrate source is going to digest. Um, and you can use that to gauge what kind of insulin response you're going to have. So uh, the more fiber, the slower the digestion, the lower the insulin response, the better the metabolic response. Um, so on this one, if we divide our 25 grams of carbs by 3 grams of fiber, we're going to get 8.3. Now the, uh, the index that I like to use, it's called the rule of 5 because usually stuff around 5 is, is ideal. Um, so 8.3 is a little higher than we would like. It's not bad compared to like kind bars or other things like that where there's you know, a lot of sugar and not much fiber. They, they might be over 10. So it's not horrible, but it's not great. Um, so, you know, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the perfect bar, um, the sugar is a little high for me. Um, the fiber index is a little high for me. And it needs to be refrigerated. So, this probably wouldn't be my top recommendation, uh, but it is on the list because I think it's a solid thing to incorporate if someone wants something to replace a meal, doesn't, ma doesn't mind the inconvenience of having to refrigerate it, and if they're fairly active and they can handle um, the sugars that are coming in here. This is something that could be utilized. But there's other options I like too. Quest bars, for example, they've been around forever. Pretty much everyone's heard of them these days. Um, from a nutritional perspective, we're looking at 200 calories in a Quest bar, 19 grams, I'm sorry, nine grams of fat, uh, 21 grams of carbs, 14 grams of fiber. So you can see where I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, one gram of sugar and 21 grams of protein. So right off the bat, we can see that there's a lot more protein, a lot more fiber, and carbohydrates and fats are a little bit more uh, 
a little bit lower. So 200 calories, that's a good point to be at because that can fit in as a snack for most people or it could be used as a meal replacement with a little something on the side. Um, so I love that about them. Um, the texture and the flavor, I can tell you they're a little tougher. Um, I happen to like them, but they're kind of like a love-hate thing. Usually people like them or they don't like them at all. So that's up to the individual. But if we look at our fiber index, 21 grams of carbs divided by 14 grams of fiber, we get an index of 1.5 on this one. So that's going to provide a very positive metabolic response. We're not going to get as big spikes in the spike of insulin from these. So they're fantastic from that perspective. They're not quite as natural and organic as, um, as the perfect bar. Uh, so these you could leave on a shelf for a long time. Um, so as long as you aren't uh, too concerned with that, um, then I think they're a really great option. And they're usually one of the top recommendations that I have for people if they don't mind uh, you know, artificial sweeteners and if they don't mind the texture and the flavor, then I think they're fantastic for most people, especially because you can find them pretty much everywhere these days. The next one on the list is gonna be RX bars. Uh, these guys I have come to like quite a bit for a few reasons, so let's get into it. Nutritionally, 180 calories, uh, 14 grams of fat, eight grams of carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, nine grams of protein, and three grams of sugar. Our fiber index, carbohydrates divided by fiber for an RX bar, is gonna be four. Fantastic, love it. Uh, the other thing I like about these is there's only like six ingredients and in everyone knows what they are. Egg whites, nuts, dates. Um, you look at the ingredients on an RX bar and you know exactly what you're eating. And it's all stuff you could go to the grocery store and find. Um, so I love the transparency of this product. It's it's. I, I, I love that. I mean, it's just, it's so transparent. You gotta respect it. You know exactly what all the ingredients are. And uh, you don't have to refrigerate them, which is another bonus. So like the Perfect Bar, which is kind of in that same natural organic category, RX bars, you, you don't have to throw in the fridge. Uh, they're pretty low calories, so they're not gonna do it for a meal. You could double up and probably do two, um, depending on what your nutritional needs are. But they're pretty low cal, so they'd definitely be in the snack category. Um, and the calories are coming in from fats from nuts. So um, from a nutritional perspective, you're getting the exact kind of metabolic response that you want. Our fiber index is four. They're gonna digest slow. We're not gonna get a big ins insulin spike. Um, so I think they're they're on the top of the list for me these days as far as bars to recommend. So it kind of comes down to whether the individual actually likes how they taste. I think they're pretty good. Different than other ones, you can definitely tell there's not a lot of sugar. They're not nearly as sweet as these. I mean, this, the perfect bar, I feel like you're eating a cookie, which is, you know, it tastes really good, but you can definitely tell there's a lot of sugar in there. Um, so the last one on the list is going to be Thick Thin Bars. Very, very, very similar to Quest Bars. Um, 230 calories, 8 grams of fat, 23 grams of carbs, uh, 1 gram of fiber, not the best there, no sugar, 20 grams of protein, uh, but they do have sugar alcohol for the sweetener. So there's 23, um, actually, I'd have to check. I think there's less than 20 grams of sugar alcohol, but Anyways, sugar alcohol is the sweetener that's in there. Now that is a zero calorie uh, sweetener that theoretically should have a very low to uh, negligible metabolic response. One thing that we have to think about is um, at about 20 grams or more, sugar alcohol has laxative effects on people. Uh, under that, most people are perfectly fine, but there's a chance that you might feel a little bloated and gassy with the uh, sugar alcohol ingredient. Um, so it provides a great metabolic response, or lack thereof, but there's a potential of uh, some digestive issues with sugar alcohol. So that's kind of a, a negative for that one. If they used a different ingredient and still achieved all the same nutritional factors here, that'd be better. So the fiber index on this is thrown off quite a bit because um, there's no fiber and there's the synthetic sugar alcohol in there. So they're, they're a good option if someone's out and about traveling and they need to find something for a snack that, that, that this would do the trick, but it probably wouldn't be the go-to item if someone has the choice to go out and buy whatever they want. If they have the access to, to Quest Bars and RX Bars and they like one of those, I would always suggest one of those first. Uh, but otherwise, think that bars get the job done. They're cheap. They're they're available. Uh, they've got a lot of vegan options uh, for people who want to stay vegan and have a bar in the mix. So. Um, really the sugar alcohol is the one gripe I've got with Think Thin Bars. So those are the top four. I would have to say RX Bars and Quest Bars are kind of tied for number one, in my opinion. 
it's really tough to pick the, uh, which one I like the best out of those. Really, it's going to come down to the, the flavor uh, for most people. That's going to be the deciding factor. But from a nutritional perspective, from a metabolic perspective, from an availability perspective, they're pretty much right there. Quest and RX bars, I think, are the best bars people should be looking at. Um, so between those two, I think most people should be completely covered um, with, uh, with their bar needs, depending on their nutritional needs. So uh, I hope this video helps uh, you guys pick out a protein bar for those. If you're in the market for that and you're you know, overwhelmed trying to figure out what to buy, uh, I would say stick to Quest bars and RX bars for the reasons I talked about there. If you got any other questions about um, uh, the bars or anything nutritional, any nutrition questions, just go ahead and shoot me an email dkruger at dkrugerfit.com and uh, I'll help you out with whatever you're looking for. And if you want to talk to us about coaching and you want to dial in this diet thing once and for all, go ahead and shoot me an email dkruger at dkrugerfit.com and we'll get you started on one of our coaching programs. I'll see you guys in the next video.